Good evening, known world. I am Excellency Ramut Al Taiva, coming to you out of the Kingdom of Artemisia in the Barony of Bronzehelm. With me today, I have the pleasure of having Sir Brel Ethian de Rims. <laughs> Sorry if I missed that. Oh, no. <laughs> Would you please introduce yourself to our audience today? Sure. I'm uh, Sir Brielthan de Rames. I am a Knight of Trimeris, a Knight of the Known uh, World Society. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here tonight and speak with you guys. I've been in the uh, Society for 36 years, uh, spanning multiple kingdoms, and uh, Road to Retention, one of my favorite subjects. Excellent. I'm so thrilled that you were here, and I'm excited to talk about your part that you play in retention in the SCA and other hobbies and LARPs and other things. <laughs> but we'll get into that in a moment. I, okay. I always like to start off, if I can, and just ask a little bit about um, your history. Like, when did you start playing? Oh, also, <laughs> need to throw this disclaimer up um, because. You are an officer and a shire. The views and opinions expressed are obviously those of the participants and do not reflect any official policy or position in SCA Incorporated. Would you please share what makes you awesome? All the, the all, all your journey, if you Oh like. my goodness. Uh, so I was introduced to the society about 85 and I didn't actually participate until about 86. And I went to my first fighter practice. Um, before that, I was involved in Kendo. Uh, so I was doing a lot of kendo and training with that, a lot of Asian theory, philosophy. I, you know, like many of us SCA folk, we started uh, in that field of martial arts. And so I went to a practice in the Outlands, and I fell in love with it. Uh, you know, there was no weight class uh, where kendo was still restricted to weight class. Uh, there was armor, of course, and you know, you could do your own persona. And you could costume. What? <laughs> so uh, I just fell in love with the whole, with all of that. And then I really identified with, of course, um, the codes of chivalry. You know, much like the Asian uh, codes of Bushido and whatnot, there was a familiarity there. So, um, yeah. So I think uh, I was involved in the Outlands for a short period of time, and then I moved over to Drakenwald, which was a principality at the time, and uh, I met. Um, uh, Viscount Sir Remy Henthel and Viscountess uh, em uh, Gwena Emrys, and they got a hold of me at the ripe tender age of 18. Nice. And so they, you know, we were trotting around uh, Germany, if you guys don't know um, the kingdom of uh, Drakenwald now, uh, and it was magical. So I really fell in love with the romance of the society, and, you know, some people like to refer to that as the golden age. Every age is the golden age. I swear to you, right now, we'll look back in 10 years from right now and, and we'll be like, oh, that was the golden age right here. Nope. So, um, <laughs> but it was, it was a very romantic age and I, I thoroughly loved it. So, and uh, I just kept traveling and playing. Uh, I've lived in uh, Trimeris, of course, and Meridies and the Outlands and um, a little bit of a while in Atlantia. So yeah, been around. Been around the horn a little bit. You create like an SCA passport and get you some retro stamps on that. And then you know, have, you, have you visit some other kingdoms and get some more stamps. Right, yeah, the SCA passport. It could be yeah. a thing. <laughs> yeah. I've traveled for events quite a bit like that, but not actually lived in those kingdoms. So, you know, maybe I could live in all the kingdoms at one point. That'd be interesting. I think Australia would be fun. Oh, yeah. I agree. Or New Zealand. I am totally yeah. down for yeah. either. Um, <laughs> I think my husband has said we are not moving anywhere until all of, both of our boys are grown up and yeah. out of the house, which okay. is going to be forever. <laughs> and, you know, I really enjoy where I'm at, too, because I'm, I border three kingdoms immediately. Nice. So I have Glenalbin, I have Trimeris, I have Meridies. And so that's that's wonderful that it's such a diverse culture between the three kingdoms. That is cool. Uh, and some great events. Yeah. Uh, where I live in Artemisia, very close in proximity to Outlands and to North Shield. And if I want to drive all day, I can be in Avacal. So, yeah, I, I totally get that. It makes it so much fun. <laughs> it does. It does. And, the, and the, you know, the flavors are so different. So I enjoy that, too. The histories of each kingdom and I like and that. Different flavors. 
the mm-hmm. flavors. The flavors. <laughs> yeah. That's like the best way to describe the like the, the cultural differences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. We've got some viewers saying hello. I've got Eleanor DeRigby from Glen Aubin tuning in. We have Sunwolf from West. And we do have our friend Aslak who is t- tuning in from Artemisia. So it's going to be great. Um, it's going to be Welcome. a good night. <laughs> so you've lived in several kingdoms mm-hmm. and you start off with a martial arts background. What officer roles and or positions um, have you held or uh, seated uh, royalty positions? Uh, so I have never been royalty. Uh, not to say that I won't ever be royalty, but certainly not in my plans anytime soon. Um, uh, but definitely an honorable seat to hold. Uh, I've been seneschal. I've been exchequer. I've, I think I've held every office. But let me think about this: arts and sciences. <laughs> I've never held an arts and science <laughs> office, but I've held all the other offices. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and I think I think that's a healthy thing for people to do. You know, it's the other side of the organization that a lot of people, um, and I would like to put this with a big asterisk at the bottom of the page. Uh, I don't think I don't think we should push our young people into officerdom in their first two months of being in the SCA. You know, so uh, I, if they, I agree. <laughs> you know, give them a chance to fall in love with the society on that other side, right? The play side that fun mm-hmm. side, you know, where we go out and we event and there's stars and there's fire pits and, you know, the, all the fun things that, that are, right, the romance yes. of the society. Um, and then, you know, once they've had a good taste of that and that's that, that fun, you know, then introduce them to the business side, that practical mm-hmm. side of what we do. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it slows down burnout because the enthusiasm of a new individual is always so wonderful and intense, but you know, they can burn themselves straight out in two years. It's about a two year all out. And by the end of the two years, you're like, I'm like, are you okay? I think I burn out. Mm. (laughs) It happens. And it it happens hard, especially for someone who is not prepared and doesn't fully understand, you know, I mean, even if you understand the position, you could still get burnt out in officer role. You know, yeah. you could have been playing, you know, 20 years and stepped into a position that you've never been in before and go, gosh, I didn't realize how much work it was required to, you know, do this. Yeah. And not to say that they shouldn't be groomed to do it or uh, yeah. I just I, I'm a big proponent of, of uh, promoting fun and. Uh, you know, an understanding of, of what they want to do, not what mm-hmm. they understand what they want to do. They know what they want to do. I think it's important for the people around them to understand what they really want to do. Well, it's yeah. setting people up for success versus setting people up for failure. You know, exactly. like what do you want to do? Exactly. You know, I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Master Aslak, my friend. Um, mm-hmm. He is burnout took a little bit more than 12 years uh, out of 13 being back. But Master Aslak, or at, at, blah, blah. Aslak, you play hard. Like, you bring it. <laughs> Aslak's in my kingdom, and there's nothing that man can't do. <laughs> there's just That's <not>. awesome. <laughs> um, let's see here. Sunwolf points out as well, officers who do not know the way for those kingdom culture uh, works uh, can be used or abused politically if they don't have a appear to protect them. And that's definitely true. It That's yeah, kind of that's the responsibility true. of a peer to protect the people. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, I kind of look at myself as the, uh, the, the bumper pads on the bowling alley, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to do your thing and I'm merely there to help direct, you know, mm-hmm. with gentleness down the lane and, and help you get there. Um, but yeah, I think I think peer, you know peers should definitely act as those bumper pads sometimes and make it a little bit easier on our folks. And um, I, I'm you know, writing this down for later. It's not that I'm not paying attention. I'm actually super paying attention um, because I need to write this down in my book for future reference here. <laughs> so, Ramut, why would you be writing something down in your book about being a peer? Uh, <laughs> Did something happen we need to talk about? 
says well, the voice yes. from beyond. Disembodied <laughs> super producer Cal. Um, I got asked if I would contemplate uh, a question at, at an event in the future. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, the thing happened. And so I want to, I want to be the best peer I can be. And um, so, <laughs> yeah, no idea. Ass lack. <laughs> Evil, evil, wicked pelican. <laughs> Congratulations. So, um, yeah. So, I, I want to be the best pair I can be. I, I want to be that gentle bumper pass and the lane to kind of help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really, you know, I think um, I also heard somebody say that peerage is like being Santa Claus. You know, um, and you get to embody the, the ideas uh, sometimes not of your own choosing, right? Because people want to project on you what, what they think the virtues are and what you might or may not embody, right? Um, but for the most part, I think, you know, people are looking towards peerage and saying, show me the way. Uh, and you get to be that Santa Claus, you know, you get to bring in the presence and the, the glitz and the glamour and the, and, uh, but what comes with that though is a responsibility to do that with love and humility. Um, because you're only there acting in these stations because of, of the populace's faith, right? You are, you are always and forever connected. And I, I have this, this thing I like to say, uh, the populace is our foundation. The peers are your pillars. The crown is your roof. I They're so that. symbiotic. Um, I'm going to have to watch our show when we're done and write all these notes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one one can't stand without the other. And so I think it's incredibly important that we remember where we come from. You know, when you're uh, just joined and you get an AOA and now you're like, I'm a lord or a lady. Well, where'd you come from? You know, a couple of years later, maybe you've got a GOA. Maybe, you know, you whatever the awards are. Maybe, you know, then you become a peer. And now it's your turn to give that magic back. Love that. Oh. <laughs> I can't write fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it all. Well, you know, we are recording, so. Thank goodness. Um, so um, you have done something so phenomenal, not only for the SEA as an organization, when it comes to retention, recruitment, engagement, but also for uh, LARP groups the non SEA LARP groups for uh, martial artists, uh, HEMA, uh, German longsword. Like, I want to talk about that because it's pretty <laughs> phenomenal. And if not, I, I will toot your horn for you there. <laughs> um, so how would you like to frame that? I mean, you know, we can, we can talk about, um, we can talk, talk about the Reaper challenge. Let's talk, talk about the Reaper challenge, how it started, how it formulated. Okay. So the, the Reaper Challenge is basically the Centennial Challenge, which is basically uh, you will perform your martial arts uh, disciplines 100 times for 100 days without missing a day. If you do miss a day, you start over. Um, so, for example, I have some folks that have done archery down the range. So that's at the end of 100 days, that's 10,000 arrows in fog, shine, rain, <laughs> uh, injuries, fatigue. Um, you know, sometimes this challenge is very easy for some people and then other people it's, it takes, it takes a journey for them. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think any two people on this challenge have ever, that I've ever talked to have had the same journey, which is fantastic. But um, it started uh, I wanted to get ready for Gulf Wars, which is one of our big Southern, um, wonderfully populated war. If you haven't been to Gulf Wars, make it happen for yourself. It's wonderful. Um, but I wanted to be prepared for that. And I, I did a kingdom challenge on our, on our page about who joined me and seven people joined me. And when we finished, I gave each one of them a patch. And that patch is what uh, I still give out to this day. I haven't changed it at all. Um, it's still the same design. It was done by um, uh, the Honorable Lady Tiki Alki. Uh, she does the patches. She's a STA member. She's been doing the patches for me all these years. That's cool. Uh, and the patch is given to you as a gift, right? It's to say thank you. 
for the longest time, I was carrying the weight of those patches. And then uh, they named themselves. They decided to call themselves the Reapers for the 100-day challenge. And so the Reapers, with their Reaper patch, uh, they now sponsor one another. They carry that forward. And um, I've been doing it eight years now. It spanned the globe. Uh, we're in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Austria. Uh, like I said, it's just spanned the globe. And it's quite a blessing because it's pulled in so many different martial arts. Uh, we've got lightsaber. Yeah, right? all those patches. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we've got lightsaber. We've got, you know, uh, foam. We've got SCA. We've got rapier. We've got archery. We've got throwing knives. I mean, if you can think of a martial prowess, uh, We've got people that have completed the challenge. And uh, the whole thing about the challenge is it fosters ownership, accountability, community, and honor. And those four things really uh, are very huge. You know, anybody can say they did this, but they don't. You know, they really, and I speak to so many people in the background. I've, I've literally spoken to hundreds of people over the years in the background, and I'll do a video for them or I'll send them to somebody that I know can help them. So this network through the organizations, not just the society, um, but all these different organizations that we just talked about has been huge. Uh, and I have learned so much. Uh, one of the core things that I have seen through all the different martial arts and all the different organizations is this. The code of ethics is there for every one of them. Right? The lightsaber guys, gals, the same code of ethics as my steel guys and gals. Oh. I think it's uh, pronounced Bohurt. I need to ask these guys properly one day. I think but, I'm pretty um, sure it's hurt. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, you know, just didn't want to offend. I uh, want to get it right. But uh, that that moral compass that repeats itself through these different martial arts organizations mm -hmm. is one of the things I absolutely love. And then the camaraderie, because one Reaper will see another, and it doesn't matter their art. And they will walk past each other, and they will acknowledge each other. And That's so this, cool. this, yeah, this patch has become um, a tool to get people talking, right? Like, hey, when did you finish your challenge? Oh, I finished my challenge, you know? And so you, now you have that camaraderie. that community. And that connection, like instant. Yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. who, where, like, oh, you did it? I did it too. Yeah. And then you have, you know, like there's been people that have come on. We want to talk about retention. There's, there's been people that got on the challenge and mm -hmm. I've been having a hard time of it, mm -hmm. right? Whatever it was, whether it was mundane or whether I just couldn't get over the hump uh, of my fighting or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, I've watched different people in the community come together in the background uh, as well as on the site on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've watched them come together to help somebody within that community. And this is not just SCA helping SCA. This is a, a lightsaber guy, rapier guy, also an SCA guy helping a Bohurt guy or gal. And, and I think that right there is, is part of just that community again mm -hmm. that That's we're cool. all really like-minded in what we're doing cal had one of those moments you were talking about too uh he was in artemisia visiting and met a fellow reaper and wound up uh getting a coin from him as a gift yeah like, that's fucking awesome <laughs> yeah it really is it really is yeah I, and i you know i see a lot more i well I see a lot uh, than just the, the page that we do this on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hear the stories coming back from different uh, different kingdoms. And, what, and so I go to war and that's a lot of fun because then my Reapers, you know, they, they run into me and they're like, hey, I am Reaper such and such. And I'm like, okay, <gasps> hang on. Give me your Facebook name. Okay, <laughs> now I know you are. <laughs> but I, it's, it's a joy um, to meet these folks and to see and to hear what they've accomplished. I love it. Really it. Is. Mm, it's a real feel-good thing. Uh, there's there hasn't been a day other than when I get scammers, <laughs> the spammers well, and, sc and scammers, right? But there hasn't been a day that I've ever gotten on the challenge, and it's not something uplifting happening. That's cool. Seeing well, those you, folks accomplish what they do. You, and you have more than just patches. I mean, as Cal mentioned, there's coins now, and don't you uh, also have some apparel as well? Oh, you know, we've done we've done some swag. Yeah. Uh, uh, off and on, we've done some swag. 
you know, a lot of that stuff comes from, um, there, there's not a, a big capital here. Like I don't work with a lot of money here. It's actually, it's really based on any kind of donation or, you know, you buy a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt, right? <laughs> there's no extra. So uh, when I do, uh, when I do apparel, uh, which I, I really like to find the nice stuff too, like the heavy jackets and the softest shirts. Uh, and when we do that, we have a good time with it. And there's a lot of input from the community too, about what kind of design they like, or mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll just surprise them. Uh, the coin was a surprise. There's a lot of Easter eggs in the coin. Uh, so yeah, the coin was like a lot of fun to surprise the community with, but yeah, we do t-shirts and, and some jackets every once in a while, but yeah. Nice. Ooh. So question, how would you apply the Reaper challenge to service and or arts and sciences? Because Master Athlec points out that he's one of six laurels in his discipline, which is magic. It's amazing. And, you know, have not met the Reaper challenge with his art. Go Reapers. But there's got to be a way to make it work. So there's been some there's been some pop up 100 day challenges for arts and sci. Um, the Kingdom of Meridies did one. Uh, and I think one of the gals on that was doing uh, illumination for 100 days in a row. Gorgeous stuff, right? Gorgeous stuff. Um, I think somebody else was doing uh, embroidery. So, nice. you know, you're setting your own parameters, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was watching one of the earlier Road to Retention shows and we were talking about um, reward systems. Yes. And, you know, part of the Reaper challenge, this 100 day challenge, you know, it can be very taxing. Mm -hmm. um, but the reward at the end of it to say, I did something a hundred days in a row and I worked hard at it and I accomplished that and I'm better for it. Uh, whatever the discipline is, whether it be arts and sciences or, you know, whether it be um, rapier or martial in a way, I, I think that everybody can benefit from that. So yeah, there, there's a couple of different 100 day challenges that have popped up for that. I love it. Go for it. Do right, it. Master Aslick. Um, I can't do magic. Um, I, I'm up for doing a hundred day arts and science challenge since I have a bunch of art stuff to do and get off my plate anyways. So uh, if you wanted to do it, like I'll help motivate you if you help motivate me. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, you got to get creative sometimes. Even my people in the martial discipline, uh, you know, they're, they're flying from one spot to the other and all they can do is hotel room pill. Mm -hmm. So I got a guy that, you know, hung a sock and he's swinging, uh, you know, his little baton at it, you know, or. Awesome. <laughs> I, I was out, uh, out of area event in my kingdom just two weeks ago at kingdom arts and science competition. And my friend, uh, Lady Victus, uh, Cheyenne, she was with attending the event and brought her rattan sword with, and she's like, can you keep track? Because uh, normally her husband and and will take turns with clickers counting each other's you know pell work, yeah. and I say yeah I can keep track of your sword blows at, and it was slow because you know she didn't want to ruin her sword on the building corner and we just happened to have the corner of the hotel. It was yeah. so amazing watching that like and and it was Friday night and Saturday night both nights going to town. So and there's even, something so rewarding about that. Yeah. And then I, like I, I'd say, Hey, you're at 50 and she'd do a couple more with that same hand. And then she switched to the other hand and I'm like, Hey, you're at, cause she sometimes it'll speed up a little bit. I'm like, Oh, you're 59. You're, you're, you're actually done. You've already done over a hundred now. Yeah. <laughs> and she might just finish off whatever combo she was working on. And then I'm like, okay, this is your new total. Yeah. It was, it was really it was cool because so dedicated to doing the challenge, not just for the sake of doing the challenge, but the for what the challenge provides for her in her martial prowess. You know, like, hey, I know doing the pell work is going to improve my accuracy, you know, finding yeah. those the shots that I could throw. And, and it's yeah. kind of, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I will say, you know, pell work does not replace hat time. No. I always say that. 
uh, and doing 100 is your min. I always say that too. Uh, but like any discipline, you know, if you are uh, a star volleyball player mm -hmm. and you're heading to the Olympics, you know, the bump is your magic, right? And you're going to yep. practice the bump and the set thousands of times. Uh, if you're a swimmer, you are going to swim the backstroke, the, you know, the side, you're, you're going to master it. You swim the, mm -hmm. swim those laps hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of times. Oh, definitely. And I think for society, uh, we tend to forget that the Pell is not only linked to our eldest of historical accuracies, right? That is a tool that is historically linked. Uh, True. And one of the oldest tools that we know of. So not only does it make it historically accurate, uh, <laughs> but it is your discipline. It's one of your disciplines, right? To go out and what is a flat snap? Uh, and I think it's hugely important to to work that. I hated the Pell when I was an uh, up and coming fighter. I hated it. I hated it so much. I right, it's either it. a love hate that people seem to have with the Pell. But, either they love it or they hate it. Well, what changed it for me is, again, this is retention. Somebody made it fun for me. Well, and you so definitely Duke are so doing that too. <laughs> Duke Solomon App Spite made it fun for me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What did you just say? I'm like, well, and that's what you're definitely doing. You are making it fun to do Pell work. You're making it fun to do, you know, a martial discipline for a hundred days, having that camaraderie with other people doing similar across different platforms. Um, I try to make it fun, but I'm also, if you if you really know me, I'm also a stickler for discipline. Uh, you know, I don't like fudging. No, you know, so uh, and every once in a while, you know, we get somebody on there who's like, I'm day seven, you know, and <laughs> I'm like, I'm fudging and I'm like, so there's me in the background. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Can I help you? What's going <laughs> on? Uh, you know, and oftentimes it's not um, out of some sort of uh, sneakiness or malice or anything like that. Oftentimes it's just I don't really have a direction. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I really want to do this, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of support. Maybe their local group is 45 minutes away. Maybe they don't have a, a knight or an elder, you know, fighter in that group. So yeah. I really try to reach out or I try to um, reapers that are in that community who might mm -hmm. know that individual. We try to network for them. Um, but yeah, you know, I think everything that we do outside of, and that's not even true. I think work in, in its way, mundane work should even be fun in its own way. Um, but you know, it should be fun. This is, this is our martial art. This is our hobby. This is something we should walk away from and feel fulfilled. And, oh, and, uh, you know, yeah, I think that's hugely important. Our hobby shouldn't drain our cup. Our hobby should help refill our cup. I agree. I agree. And you know, there's a lot of cup fillers, you know, that, that I, I think sometimes, uh, you know, when we get into a situation where we're always volunteering and helping and at every turn and we love doing that there's 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 no sorrow in that we love doing it mm -hmm. um but you get so busy and so caught up that you forget what's really important and that is to stop and take that one minute to look somebody in the eyes and and just take a minute with them yep, yep. just take time with them and, and it doesn't have to be anything great. It's just, I'm going to stop, look you in the eyes and talk to you for five seconds and acknowledge that you're standing here. Definitely. Um, you know, or when people walk up, open your circle. Don't keep your shoulder to them. You know, body language is huge in the society. And I, I don't think enough people pay attention to body language in the society or in general. You know, but people give you verbal cues all the time about where their comfort level is. Well, and having my... My child is on the spectrum, right? He's autistic and body language he won't pick up on. He's better now than he was, you know, yeah. 18 years ago by a lot. Yeah. But he just doesn't. And verbal cues also doesn't pick up on yeah. as much as, as one would like. So I think that sometimes we forget that, you know, that communication is kind of that combination or amalgam of both. And if you, you need to be blatant sometimes when somebody doesn't pick up on it as well. 
Yeah, that's fair. And, and ask, hey, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. You know, am I making you uncomfortable with this this dialogue that we're having? You know, between us, is it okay this interaction? All right, and, and do kind of those pulse checks. Is this a kind of communication style you mm-hmm. enjoy? Yes, no. All right, you've checked the no box. Bye. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, just- and and that speaks to itself. You know, to help to be a better teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people just go out and teach their thing, and that's awesome that you're that you're trying to teach and you're teaching. But I think it's hugely important too that you stop and you listen to what they need in you as a teacher, right? Definitely. You know, not everybody learns the same. Not every, like you know, like you just said, you just pointed out, not everybody communicates the same with body language. Great point, by the way, right? <laughs> so you know, these these are considerations to stop and say, okay, mm-hmm. you know, how do we keep retention? And I think, you know, reaching out, I reach out to a lot of people and I'm genuine and I, and I truly want to help. I truly want to know if I can help you. Um, And it does take a lot of my, my energy and time. It's like a part-time job, to be honest with you. Uh, The society in itself is like a part-time job, (laughs) right? I always say it's like the hobby of hobbies. (sighs) Yeah. Right. And we choose this and, and typically we're in love with it. You know, anybody that stayed in the society for a really long time, there's there's a love there that and so many friends, so many family, so many, yeah. you know, yeah. It is a I call it family. My friends that are my family. <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> I, I like heard that. It from. Hang on, write that down. Yep. <laughs> family, friends that are yeah, my I like family. Because <laughs> that's like what that. it. I mean, that's how I feel. Like, there's times where you you don't always love every member of the family for the day but you love them forever you know yeah so well, i think i think there's a notion in the sca too that because we practice you know chivalry and the codes mm-hmm. um that we should like and love everybody uh i think the truth lies somewhere in between where we should treat everybody with kindness yeah and respect yeah. and dignity and, um and but not we're not all the same tribe no, you know, sometimes you just don't feel comfortable with tribe A or tribe B, you know, you, you're tribe C and that's okay. But uh, to stir dissension between, you know, the different houses or tribes or however you want to frame it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a lot of that over the 36 years and, and, you know, it happens. Part of it's just because we're competitive, right? Oh, yeah. You know, in a, in a good way. But when it becomes a negative kind of thing, you know, obviously we don't want to play like that. But, you know, I think it's hugely important that people remember that not everybody needs a Cerberalfin. Okay. Um, and I, I tell I tell people this, you know, not everybody needs a Cerberalfin. Some people need a Duke Baru or, uh, you know, a Sir Cherish because they identify, they learn differently, uh, and their tribes are different. And I think we need to respect that more in the society. I don't think Definitely. somebody new who's like, man, I, I really identify with Sir Cherish and her tribe, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't think they should get knocked because they're not identifying with you or your tribe. Definitely. No, they um, shouldn't. And I think that pushes people out of the society because they're like, well, why are you, why are you looking down your nose at tribe C? I've never had any issue with them. Well, you should have issue with them because we have issue with them. Well, don't poison the well for the the whole, you know, city because you're unhappy with somebody. We all drink from the same of same place, you know. Like, don't do that. And I think it, I think it lacks chivalry and honor to do something like that. If you're truly a proponent of these virtues that we like to tout then you know to disparage another when somebody needs another they don't need Mm -hmm. you or your tribe they needed something different Mm -hmm. to disparage that especially a youngster coming in and you know by youngster i mean anywhere from you know five to 85 right Mm -hmm. a youngster the society um a new person the society to Mm -hmm. to disparage them to other people to them it's makes you look bad and it certainly isn't holds no honor (laughs) <laughs> um, both Frodo actually said something a while ago about what we we're saying at the time, but it's also applicable to this, where they said deeds are self-explanatory. So, I mean, it mm-hmm. applies to if you say something bad about another person, what does it say about you? You know what I mean? Like, 
and it's hard too, you know, because we're 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 fallible creatures, and we do get frustrated, and we do like things our way. Um, but the truth is, you know, sometimes, you know, even me, I'm like, oof, maybe I shouldn't have framed it that way, or maybe I should be a little more gentle in my my mm -hmm. my opinions, right? Uh, yeah, I've had to reel myself back in a couple of times, and I'm like, that's not that doesn't sound very honorable. I don't really well, like, you know what I mean? Even myself, so. Well, and I think I like. Once I've said something, yeah, you know, I I try to speak from the heart, and I try to try to be courteous and gracious, and look at other people's point of view, and try to look at you know best case scenario. But if I make a mistake, I, you have to say I I made a mistake. I mean, we are fallible, and it's okay to be wrong, yeah. and it's okay to say hey, guess what, I was wrong. It's okay to to have that dirt on your face or eat crow. We're human. I think ownership is hugely important to me. Uh, you know, I, it's one of the, definitely one of the things that I tout, um, you know, things like owning, you owned your day, you know, and even mundanely, we get up in the morning, did you own your day? Did you? <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. I'm like, did you own today? Did you, you know, did you own that moment? Did you try to you know, do a good thing? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think ownership is, is huge. That's one of the things, taking that ownership for self. So before the show, we had talked a little bit about how we have this influx of new members, a younger generation. Some of us are a little bit more seasoned and how we react as maybe uh, older members or older peers. And I don't mean older in age necessarily. I'm older as in we've been in this game longer. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think was, we came back from COVID and every event that I have been to since we came back from COVID, so we're looking about, what, two years now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is this huge influx of under 30. And they're incredible. And <laughs> Yeah, they really are. And they're excited and they're new. And, you know, a lot of them don't know who the older peers are, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they might know by a glance or, you know, but initially, no, they don't. You know, they're just learning the ropes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as peers, I think sometimes we, uh, we don't have our ear to the ground anymore as we did once, you know, before peerage. And part of that is our station and the duties that are expected of us, right? Um, and sometimes we get caught up in those duties and we don't necessarily get to keep our ear to the ground with the populace and what's going on with them. But, you know, the populace, if you listen, they're going to tell you exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's going to be, well, we think Bob over here needs to be a knight. You know, or we think Joan over here needs uh, an AOA. And I think it's hugely important again to to stop and say, all right, what is going on with our populace? Uh, I was elevated 34 years into the society. So I had a long time to spend with the populace uh, and listen. And I think what's one of the things that I came out with, I was like, I don't want to ever lose my ear to the ground with the populace. Um, and I think sometimes it's difficult for us to do because we are tasked with, with say, you know, managing things at a, at a, a higher level uh, and being very busy with those things. And then, of course, our own associates, you know, I've got four mm -hmm. squires or I've got, you know, uh, three protégés or whatever. <laughs> and then you get your own people you're trying to wrangle. Uh, and so sometimes I think peerage loses that rhythm of the people. And so mm -hmm. if you take a moment to sit by the fire and just listen you'll hear things and see things that are going to give you, I think, better direction on how to people, how to help the people locally to you. I love that. It helps me sometimes just to sit and listen. At, uh, Master yeah. Aslak points out too, that new people don't care what words that you have. They care how you can help them enjoy the game and how they can help you. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, oftentimes they hear about who you are before you even get to meet them. Mm -hmm. So now here you're meeting these people and they already have heard your name. They've already heard a story about you. You have not heard their names. You have no stories about them. 
And so, you know, how you greet them when you're being introduced, because somebody thought enough of you to bring these new people to you to introduce yeah. you. So let me tell you something, that's not about you. No, not at all. That's about, the new, that's about the new people. And that's about that person that thought enough of you to introduce these new people. Okay, so you are a conduit to what they believe right action and right thinking is. Mm -hmm. Or they certainly would not have brought these people to introduce you to. Yeah. So there's a huge responsibility in that too. If I just go, hey, yep, 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 I'll get back with you later. That's what they're going to remember is you didn't have time. Yep. Yep. Uh, and they're also going to look at this person that took them to introduce you and they're going to go, I kind of thought you said they were great. Why, why, are you, great. why are you introducing <laughs> me to this person? <laughs> See you later. I, I, I can't talk right now. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But if we take that five seconds and you say, it is really nice to meet both of you. I'm so pleased you were here. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but I would love to meet up with you later. Um, you know, this is what's going on. If I don't see you then, please come say hello to me, okay? You know, see me, come say hi to me. And, uh, but right now I have this thing I have to take care of. Uh, you know, what were your names again? And then remember those names, if you can. I have to do word association all the time. I'm terrible at names. Um, but it's that, that's five seconds of just that touch time. Uh, and it's a genuine thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because I truly do want to know who you are and I truly want to know what your passions are. And I truly am excited that you're here in this thing that I love so much. And I'm so excited that I get to meet you. And I really appreciate this guy or gal that took all this time and thinks enough of who I am to bring you to an introduction. Yeah. Like that's a lot yeah. of trust and faith. It really is. And so I think that we honor that. Definitely. And I think a lot of peers really do try. I, you know, there's very few peers that I've ever met that are just unkind mm -hmm. or maybe too caught up in self to really be what a lot of people consider peers to be. Um, but for the most part, I think that people in our organization that are peerage and uh, are striving for peerage are those people that really want better things and they want good things for the, for people in general. I'm going to agree to that. I yeah, hope as I, well. I, I, yeah. I like to think the best in people and you know, people will always show their true colors. Eventually they'll always show their true colors. And so I don't worry about that so much. Uh, what I worry about is, um, are you having a good time? Right. Cause you're out in the woods with the bugs and the heat and the dirt and the sand and your grumpy partner who's trying to unpack boxes and the sweaty and not rained on you. <laughs> and you're covered in and a bazillion green. mosquito bites <laughs> and you're bruised and you're sunburnt and you're tired and you're hungry and you never sleep enough and you never eat enough and never drink enough water right? no right <laughs> and everything you have smells like wood smoke or or and we sign up <laughs> and we sign up to do it again in a heartbeat <laughs> that's passion that's passion that's love So another thing we talked about um, before the show was you've kind of made what you do and share kind of, you don't have an agenda. You don't have a plan. It just evolved um, organically into what it is when it came to the Reaper challenge. How, how does that make you feel knowing that it, it's done that and will continue to do that? Um. You know, like I said, the, the expectation was not for it to turn into what it's turned into. But um, initially, initially, you know, when I realized that it was starting to travel and that it was having an impact, um, I don't advertise. I've never had to advertise. I don't want to advertise. Um, people that are seeking this will find it. Yeah. And they have over and over again. And... And I think it's a wonderful legacy to leave behind for myself personally. I've, I've loved the martial arts my whole life. Um, I think it saved my life on a couple of different occasions when I was younger, 
It gave me a safe place to be. The society gave me a safe place to be. Um, but I think it's a wonderful legacy um, to leave behind. And if it does continue, I would be thrilled. You know, that would be something that, because I've seen people prosper and grow and there's and not heal. a single person that has finished this. Yeah, this, there's not a single person that has finished this challenge that hasn't said, I got something out of it, right? Well, um, and well, we've, we've had, I'm sorry, go ahead. I stumbled upon a group on Facebook um, during COVID and just was floored and watching how it gave our, us an opportunity to do things when we couldn't do things with others, you know, but yet stay engaged with each other. Yeah. And again, you know, that was kind of a, we, we existed before the, uh, the plague. Uh, and that was kind of like, we just filled a need for just so many folks. Uh, yeah. they could stay active, that they could stay connected, that, you know, we still felt like we were fighting, even though we weren't fighting. Uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty special. As a matter of fact, that was the time when the, co uh, the coin was developed, the Reaper coin. Uh, and then we kind of did some t-shirts and stuff just for fun. But the community really strove to bring in a lot of different um, platforms. Mm -hmm. That's when we really saw Lightsaber, uh, Bohurt, um, uh, all the steel guys and gals. I mean, we mm -hmm. really saw a big influx of that because there was nothing going on. And this was something they could bite their teeth into and and still feel like they were owning that, you know, that calling. Um, well, and not, so, yeah, I would say, you know, it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it did start rather organically. But I'm again, I'm not going to take away from the hundreds of hours that I've you know, put forth in this, the Saturdays that I'm mailing out packets. Um, you know, it is a, it is a part-time job sometimes. And the community does this amazing thing where they support each other uh, by sponsoring patches, you know, because I, I, I carry the cost myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, which is fine. It's something I chose to do and I love doing. So I'm certainly not grumping there, but uh, you know, occasionally I've been in situations where I'm like, I can't, mm -hmm. and that's life. And mm -hmm. I've thrown that flag and that community has come together and said, no, nope, we will not let these people go without their patches or, you know, we'll make sure that they get their patches. And, and I think, you know, I couldn't anticipate that. Uh, I certainly couldn't have anticipated it going global. I couldn't anticipate the impact that it's made on different folks' life and health. Uh, we've had several people come back from serious health mm -hmm. um, crisis to to fight again and and i had a lady that she never even fought and she went through the whole challenge with a piece of pvc and and a garage you know uh frame and mm -hmm. now she's a rapierist in the society oh, that's I mean, awesome. from, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the community the community came together and there's a gentleman who i can't remember his name right now but he tends to make a rapier for two individuals every year and then gives them away I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about prospering others, right? He gave her a rapier sword and she never looked back. She uh, joined the society and does rapier now. And so, yeah, that's a lot of fun. But so, yeah, I would say, you know, yes, it's very organic. Um, there is a lot of work that I put into it. There's a lot of work that other people have put into it. But at the end of the day, uh, wow, what a what a fantastic blessed and really it's unplanned <laughs> legacy. But yeah, you know, I've, like I said, I've done it eight years now. If I can continue doing it, I will. And uh, maybe, you know, one day we'll see kingdoms, kingdoms pick it up and, and do something of their own flavor with it. You know, something a little more Then maybe there won't be a need because the kingdoms will be doing it. Well, wink, wink. wink, 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 wink. <laughs> hey, kingdoms. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you got a phone call you might want to pick it up <laughs> um yeah yeah so but, you know it's also there's also something very obtainable about it let's yeah. say that you know you're you want an aoa mm -hmm. but you have to be in the kitchen or maybe you have to be social and maybe you're not good at that maybe you just don't want to be social maybe you're just crippled by it mm -hmm. you can go out and hit a stick with a stick for 100 days 100 times and get your patch at the end of the day and then walk into a society event and there's another reaper there. 
-hmm. So there's something very obtainable about the 100 day challenge that I love, right? For people that don't necessarily get seen or want to be seen. Mm -hmm. Because that is, that's a choice. A lot Mm -hmm. of people don't want to be that super... I'm going to go talk to all the people I've never met before. You know, I just want to sit back and watch, you know, or I want to. But they want to be, yeah, I want to be included too. Yep. So, yeah. uh, There is an individual on today that's viewing, uh, Robert St. John, who is saying that today they hit their (laughs) 20 uh, shots today. So, or hit their day 20. 20, His 20th day? Yeah. I think that's. So, uh, Robert is my squire brother through uh, Duke Solomon Epspite of the Arachnid. So oh. he's, uh, yeah, so he's, he's, uh, he's worked this challenge a couple of times. He's, he's getting after it. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. And I love watching, you know, that you can do it as many times as you want, like complete challenge mm-hmm. after challenge after challenge. And yeah. I also like how, if for whatever reason you're not able to the first time, the second time you go back, it's still your round one. Like you start yes. at round one until you've completed it. And to me that it's like the, the slate's been wiped clean. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, this is mm-hmm. round two after my failed attempt at round one. You know what I mean? Like it feels, yeah. it, it feels like we're not acknowledging the negative or acknowledging the positive that in that aspect so well you know i always like to type in when somebody says oh, i missed a day i had to start over i love to type in honor owned yes yes right it takes it takes a great uh, deal of courage mm-hmm. to not only start over but you know to acknowledge that hey i didn't hit the mark mm-hmm. um but if anybody knows anybody that that has finished this challenge or walks the path Mm -hmm. uh it's all about finishing and missing the marks some of them Mm -hmm. you 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 nail that mark and others you're like (laughs) i like swung so far left i can't even (laughs) and uh, i think when people say hey i didn't own it or i failed uh i'm proud of that i'm just as proud of that as i am when somebody says i reached my hundred day Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, it looks like we've got a comment from Cal saying one of the things we can do more in the SEA is providing achievable goals with distinct mm-hmm. win conditions. Yes. That it's something that we as a populace have to drive. And I think that the 100 day challenge really does that. You have your goal. It's realistic. You can achieve it. You don't have to do your hundred shots all at once. You can break it up throughout the day. You don't have to do it necessarily with, you know, one tool or another. You've got options. Right. And and the win condition is I've done it consistently. I've got that consistency piece. Yeah. 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 And you know how people tell me I could never do anything a hundred days in a row. And I'm like, I hope you've brushed your teeth a hundred days in a row, <laughs> you know, I hope you maybe washed your hands a hundred days in a row. You're going to uh, spit me out. Of, yeah. You know, look, man, we, we do all kinds of things a hundred days in a row, but uh, when it comes to picking up a stick and hitting another stick or pulling a bow and shooting an arrow down the range or throwing your knives, the conditions change. You mm-hmm. know, like I said, I've had people with injuries. I've had people with, you know, loss, mm-hmm. uh, family loss, um, I've had people, you know, mentally say, I, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. And again and again, I watched this community, which is SCA, mm-hmm. right? Support one another. Yeah. And say, okay, you know what? You just got brain weasels. Let's work it out. Yeah. Um, there's something that you you touched on earlier that Cal was saying, you know, making smaller um, recognitions more achievable mm-hmm. uh, or, or making recognitions more achievable, right? Making it easier to, um, I agree with that. Uh, and, you know, how do you do something like that? Yeah. Right? Uh, it took me a, 11 years to get an AOA. 
know, <laughs> that was my first award ever. Uh, and I did all the things, mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to fight in Crown List. And somebody realized you don't have an AOA, you can't fight in Crown List. But it, the AOA doesn't wasn't necessarily given to me for my service, which mm -hmm. it could have been. Mm -hmm. It was given to me because somebody's like, what? oh my gosh, you can't fight Crown? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Let me fix this. <laughs> <laughs> which is great, because I, I got to do both. I got recognized uh, I could fight Crown, right? But I think... Uh, I think in the society, you know, your AOA is your your basically your entry level um, mm -hmm. introduction to to the award system, right? The recognition mm -hmm. system, and and I don't think we need to necessarily need to get rid of the system. I just think that as as peers, we need to set achievable expectations, mm -hmm. and I think as people seeking, that you can't expect your peers to do it for you. So one of the things we run into, and I tell my squires this, my job is not to make you a knight, okay? My job is not to hold your hand and get you to an event or get you into the ring fighting and the, you know, the tournament specter. That's not my job. My job is to mentor you, be your, your bumper rails, you know, I like my bowling analogy, but you know, I'm the bumper rails in, in your bowling game, right? You need to throw straight and clean and make sure that you're taking all those pins down, but I am the bumper rails to make sure that you, you know, it's a little softer and easier for you. It is my job to town cry when you do good stuff. Look at what they have done. This has happened. That's amazing, right? <laughs> It is not our job as a peer, in my opinion, to do the work for you or to guide you to that work. You have to have a sense of what that is. But it is your job as a peer to set those victory conditions and say, hey, this is what they look like. Okay. How do you want, what do you want? Well, I want to be, let's take the bear, for example, in Meridius. I want to be a bear. Okay. Do you know the victory conditions for this? I don't really know. Well, you need to show to a war. You need to be a war guy. You need to do that. So a, a peer's job, and I would say elder, you know, more experienced fighters and whatnot, it's their job to say, hey, we're going to guide you. We're going to show you. But it's your job to get it done. And I think for us, we need to set those expectations uh, and do it in a way that makes sense for them, not not how we did it, right? So you want to you want to get to a place where we can give out these awards uh more quickly like 11 years is ridiculous to get an aoa yeah right uh and then there's people that fall through the cracks so how do you find that balance i think it's up to the peers i think it's up to the crown i think the crown needs to seek and they need to reach down if the peers are the pillars and the crown is the roof and our populace is our foundation then that roof should reach down and say pillars who are my people and those peers, by keeping their ear to the ground with a populace, they know those people. All they have to do is ask. Yep. So Love that. Ah, oh, you give me chills the whole freaking day <laughs> or the whole show. I love it. <laughs> um, we're kind of at the end of our hour here. That was so quick. Hour. Just, it it was quick. It was amazingly organic and fluid and. I loved it. I've, I've had so much fun. I certainly, end up, you know, gosh, anything that promotes a healthy SCA and promotes fun and promotes passion and love uh, in the society and the understanding that we're not all the same tribe, yeah. but we should definitely work together. If you believe in those, those uh, codes and, and those ethics are moral compass of the society. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm always available too. I'd just like to shout out, uh, if you need somebody to talk to, um, and if I'm available, I will definitely make myself available. So I'm That's here. Cool. All right. So I'm going to do some quick pluggables here real quick. And then if you've got a shout out, we can do that. I've got a shout out. <laughs> yeah. um, coming up next on 5-9 with This Just In on uh, Calbar's Corner here, we have A Decade of Sanctions with Mahuen. So tune in and check that out. It's going to be interesting. On 514, on Coffee with Cal, we have hypocrisy and lack of action. 
it's going to be an intriguing show as well. And then next on Road to Retention on 6-4, I've got Viscountess Moira of Kent. And I'm looking forward to that as well. It's going to be great. If you want to know what Calbard is up to, you can check him out on the Tick of the Talks at Calbarder. Come on, Cal. If you want to know what I'm up to, and now if you want to see the shenanigans of how I struggle with not being able to do stuff for um, sitting on hands type time for a while, uh, you can check me out at Gina Kitts. Although I do have stuff I have to get off my plate really fast, um, <laughs> but efficiently and beautifully. Um, and if you want to support Calvert's Corner, you can go to Patreon forward slash KK Productions. You could do a donation there. But, you know, if, if you're kind of a person who likes the more tangible and you don't want to do that, you can search for stickers on Redbubble at KK Productions. Well... Shout out time. Is there a person or persons or a group or organization that you would like to shout out to today? Uh, I'm going to do the big general blanket of, to everybody in the society that makes each event and each encounter uh, something to be remembered, something fun, something happy uh, and acknowledging to all of those people that do that out there. You make the SCA a little bit better every single event. Keep doing that. Um, to those that have been disheartened, reach out and find your tribe that makes your heart light and happy. They're out there. You just got to keep looking. Um, Ramut, I wanted to say thank you and congratulations to your pending elevation. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you will you will do great service to your kingdom and the people. I really appreciate that. And I, Cal, I definitely going to try. Cal, thanks for all you do. Yeah. I've watched your shows. You guys are doing good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, my shout out today is to all the people in Artemisia because you guys are amazing. It <laughs> blew my mind yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.